Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is a scientific presentation about fetus ultrasound. This is the ninth video in this video series about cerebral ventricular megaly part 2. In video part 1, I explained these items. In this video, we will see role of fetal MRI in diagnosis of ventriculomegaly, prognosis, management of ventriculomegaly, and final teaching points. We can see all these items in video part 2. The first one is rule of fetal MRI. Ventriculomegaly is one of the most common indication for fetal MRI. There is some debit as whether fetal MRI is indicated in all cases of apparently isolated ventriculomegaly or not. Fetal MRI can be a helpful adjunct to ultrasound and has been shown to improve the detection of additional abnormalities in up to 50% of ultrasound diagnosed ventriculomegaly. As we can see in this image with bilateral severe ventriculomegaly and also evidence of intracranial hemorrhage. Because the prognosis is related to the presence of additional abnormalities, prenatal detection of associated anomalies is essential. Sonographically occult findings can include a genesis of corpus callosum, cortical malformations, cerebellar abnormalities, and distractive changes. On fetal MRI, precise measurements of the lateral third aqueduct of sylvius and fourth ventricles can be defined. As we can see in this sagittal T2 image at 27 weeks with fluid in aqueduct of sylvius, the fourth ventricle with a normal size and configuration, vestigial point and also cisterna magna. Axial measurements on fetal MRI at the level of the thalamic nuclei can be obtained but may be 1 to 2 mm inconsistent with ultrasound measurements. Coronal measurements inside the lateral ventricular wall at the level of the choroid plexus are highly concordant between both ultrasound and MRI and probably provide the best technique for lateral ventricular measurement. It's easiest to visualize and measure the third ventricle on the coronal plane. A normal third ventricle should measure less than 4 mm in transverse dimension. Some authors have found that measurements of the lateral ventricles on MRI are slightly larger than on ultrasound by an average of 0.6 mm. However, must conclude that there is a 90% agreement between the atrial dimension on ultrasound when compared with MRI. Rarely, measurements defined as ventriculomegaly on ultrasound are found to be normal on fetal MRI. On a coronal plane, as I told, the third ventricle should be below 4 mm, and on sagittal imaging, the fourth ventricle below 7 mm. Below 24 weeks and sometimes beyond, the ventricles may demonstrate a primitive configuration in which the occipital horns are mildly disproportionate to the frontal horns, as we can see in these images. If the ventricles are angular, a neural tube defect is almost always present, as we can see in this axial image through the ventricles demonstrates decreased subarachnoid space with dilated occipital horns. This sagittal T2 image demonstrates herniation of the cerebellar tonsils and vermis through the foramen magnum with obliteration of cisterna magna and also the fourth ventricle. And these images related to Chiari 2 wall formation MRI at 21 weeks gestation. Colpocephaly means marked 
dilatation of the posterior horn with abnormal parallel frontal horns should raise concern for a corpus callosum abnormality. Now we can see a teaching point together. This axial image demonstrates parallel configuration of the lateral ventricle consistent with colpocephaly. Before explaining this sagittal image, we need to review normal anatomy. This is a normal midline sagittal T1 image and here is a schematic view. In this schematic view, we can see the posterior columns of pharynx, commissure of pharynx or hypocampal commissure, anterior columns of pharynx and mammillary body and here is hypocampi. This sagittal T1 image showing the arc-like configuration of the pharynx like a schematic view at the upper margin of the vellum interpositum which is situated between the lateral and third ventricles. The pharynx is attached to the septum placidum which in turn is attached to the inner curving surface of corpus callosum. The pharynx bifurcates at the level of the anterior commissure with the post-commissural fibers projecting to the mammillary bodies. Now we can get back to this sagittal T2 image. This sagittal T2 image shows absence of corpus callosum and missing hypocampal commissure and pharynx, but anterior commissure is present. Also, we can see here radial arrangement of gyroi and prominent third ventricle. This coronal image of the same fetus shows prominent third ventricle and interhemispheric fluid probest bundles are noted adjacent to crescentric frontal horns probest bundles which also called longitudinal colossal fascicles are aberrant anterior posterior white matter tracts that form in the agenesis of the corpus callosum in other findings in this Coronal image, neocavum septum placidum and hypocampi are incompletely rotated. These images related to a fetus at 30 weeks with a genesis of corpus callosum. Fetal MRI in the presence of the ventriculomegaly has been shown to demonstrate a higher percentage of associated anomalies versus ultrasound. However, it's important to remember that migrational abnormalities like heterotopia may not be apparent early in gestation. It should also be remembered that there is often a lag in development of the sulci and gyri when a fetus has ventriculomegaly or other CNS abnormalities. The second item is prognosis of ventriculomegaly. The prognosis of ventriculomegaly overall has been stated to be guarded with mortality of 70 to 80 percent and only half of surviving children developing normally. What is the prognostic factors which may affect to the prognosis of ventriculomegaly? The first one is the cause of ventriculomegaly, presence of associated intracranial and extracranial malformations, association of chromosomal abnormalities present with viral infection, the severity of the ventriculomegaly and also progression of ventriculomegaly during the later stages of the pregnancy. When ventriculomegaly improves or resolves, 70 to 80 percent of fetuses have a good outcome. It's questioned whether unilateral ventriculomegaly has a better outcome than bilateral or not. Asymmetrical ventriculomegaly has been most commonly described with severe ventriculomegaly, which tends to have a worse prognosis. Controversial data suggest that a male fetus with ventriculomegaly has a better outcome than female. 
what we can do for management of the ventricular megaly. Depending on gestational age at identification, management options include termination or expectant management at delivery. Counseling should be directed to known findings and potential outcomes. If continuation of the pregnancy is decided, caesarean delivery is recommended for those fetuses with enlarged cranium. In this case, delivery must be delayed until the fetus is mature enough to survive. Dilemma occurs in the presence of progressive hydrocephalus as increasing ventricular dilatation can result in brain damage. The current recommendation is early shunt placement after induced delivery as soon as long maturity permits. Postnatal treatment is directed to the cause of the ventricular megaly. Now, I think we need to review the final teaching point of these two videos. Ventricular megaly is one of the most common false positive diagnoses at ultrasound screening. Care must be taken to obtain the measurement on a true transventricular plane at the level of the glomus of the choroid. Ventricle asymmetry of at least 2 mm without dilatation can be present physiologically as a normal variant. Measurements are subject to error because of off-axis image plane in ultrasound, angled measurement, or improper choice of the ventricular boundary. The atrium of the lateral ventricle is preferred as a measurable landmark since the size and configuration is essentially stable during the second and the third trimesters. In contrast to the frontal horn, which changes in configuration with gestational age. In most fetuses with significant ventricular enlargement, the ventricles are symmetrically affected, whereas cases with milder degrees of ventricular megaly are more commonly unilateral. Male fetuses have a slightly larger atrial size than female fetuses, thus a ventricular atrial measurement of 10 to 11 mm will have more significance in a female fetus than in a male fetus. Ventricular megaly is one of the most common indications for fetal MRI. Chronal measurements inside the lateral ventricular wall at the level of the choroid plexus are highly concordant between both ultrasound and MRI and probably provide the best technique for lateral ventricular measurement. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.